Some of the most remarkable people in this world don't appear on movie screens or in sports arenas. They work in offices, study in classrooms, and raise families at home. They're just ordinary people like you and I. Ordinary people who happen to have experienced something extraordinary and survived. <music> Off the Map is a travel television series I directed and shot over a 12-year period. Unlike most explorer stories, these modern travelers are women. Ordinary women who agreed to be filmed taking journeys to extraordinary places. For the Gambia program, I was joined by my female host, Arlene. We intended to travel into Gambia via the Gambia River. We had to cross from Senegal uh, into Gambia by the Gambia River. All those people on that ferry just brought me right back to the Africa I had met years before. It was as if I was coming home. The women were in their colorful costumes with their turbans in their bright dresses, carrying baskets on their heads or chickens or whatever it was. Banjul carried me right back to Malawi. That red soil, the heat, the friendly faces, and colorful dress. You see all these socks? Yeah, they are second-hand sets, but they are still good. And they're not too expensive. And no. How, how much? How much would a pair of jeans be? One morning I went with Anna, my guide to the women's market in Banjul. That was interesting. First of all, it was only women in this section. And here again, a lot of color. Uh, they looked, I think they wore their best to the market. I, I like the head pieces to keep the sun off their head. And tied it over. <laughs> I need one. Yeah. Maybe we can look after. Yeah. Like the woman. Yeah, I like that. Brown nuts? Yeah, brown nuts. Famous, famous in Gambia? Yeah. yeah. We are in the season now. You can this looks like a women's cooperative here. Ah. So what what uh, what are you doing here? She's sell, uh, buying corn. Buying corn. And then where will you sell it? They said they used to uh, combine and buy one bag and share it in between and then take it home and resell it. Do you come every day? And how many hours are you here? It looked like hard work, but they were proud of, of what they did. They seem to have a, a strength in unity. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm. I like this. You like it? I do. It's, yeah. Where is it made? It's made in the Gambia. Very pretty. Yeah. And it's nice light cotton. Yeah, it's very yeah. soft. Can you make me a scarf like that? Yeah, no problem. Okay. I can make it for you. Once you get the hang of bargaining, it's all part of the fun. Hagglers are rarely trying to rip you off, so there's no point getting hot and bothered about it. Decide what price you're prepared to pay, and if you can't get it, decline politely and move on. So if you like, I can give it to you for a very nice price. Oh, okay. Uh, what's a nice price? You have American? Yeah. Okay, you can give $10. Ah! That is a little too much. No, that's a nice price so that you can be my customer next time you, you come to me. So what's your price then? Five. Five is too small, you go up a little bit. Five fifty? Five fifty is too small. Okay, you can give nine fifty. No! No, no, no! Okay, go down, you go up, we are going oh, to oh, the oh, now. Oh, oh, I'm stopping at, um, I'm stopping at six. 
This is too small for me. Oh, then I'm, go I'm going to have to uh, no. look someplace else. I, I have to look someplace okay, what's else. Your highest Thank highest you very much. <laughs> Uh, my highest price is six. Six Delassi. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, you okay, know how you much I love it. Price, no can problem. I? Yeah. Okay, it's a bargain. It's going towards the crocodile pool. Another guide, Musa, and I went to the crocodile pools. A number of similar sacred pools exist along the banks of the river, mostly dried up or shallowly filled with damp mud in which a surprising large number of crocodiles wallow. Where you can see all of the, the crocs. Ah. Yeah, so the crocodiles. They look pretty docile. Yeah, they, they're harmless. These are the dwarf type of crocodiles. We have the Nile and the dwarf type of crocodiles. But this place here has been breeding crocodiles since time immemorial. Really? This is Kachikale. It's a holy place and it's a sacred place. People here, they said that these crocodiles are all sacred crocodiles. They're all underneath. Yes, more than I, 70 of them are underneath. And except I, for our two friends here. Yeah. About well, uh, how old are those two? These are maybe about two and a half, three years old, but they're bigger ones uh, who have been here since about 10, 11 years. Uh -huh. As crocodiles represent the power of fertility in Gambia, women who experience difficulties in conceiving often come here to pray and wash. Gambian wrestlers and pilgrims bathe in the pool in the hope of superiority in the ring or the healing of their ailments. Musa and I one morning went to the famous Abuko Game Reserve. At one point we saw a colony of huge ants. I don't think I'd seen ants this size before. Just marching across our path. These are the ants. Look at the bigger ones. Uh -huh. They guide the younger ones. And in the correct direction, you can see they're going, moving in two different directions, but they're all coming the same way. They guide them. And if you don't want to listen, they take you. And you're disciplined. Those are the, the soldiers. Okay. And then they just pick you up? They pick you up and take you and you're disciplined. Okay. Yes, they take you to jail. <laughs> yes. They are disciplined and they know what they have to do. How, how many do you think would be crossing My path? God, it's more than a million. You're looking at millions and they can attack and they can kill even a python. Believe me, within 24 hours, the python is gone. Yes, they kill. Imagine. Now, what we didn't know was that we were upsetting them because they felt our footsteps nearby. And, and we're kneeling down and looking at them, and pretty soon, they are coming into our sandals and coming up our pant legs. Well, we had to get out of there fast. Feels a bit like rain, eh? Yeah. I think so, but uh, not now. The Gambia is famous for its birds and its animals, and this was a, a beautiful reserve we visited. And it was a fresh morning, it was lovely, and we'd walk through these canopies of trees. I can't believe the amount of bird life here. Yeah, lots of birds. Right here in Abuko, it's about 300 species. In the Gambia itself, it's about more than 700 species, of different type of birds. Okay. See, that grass looks like rice. They're not rice, they're wild grass, giant grass they are. Is that a neem tree? No, it's not a neem tree. It's a... It's, oh, it looks like it. No, it, they're within the families of the neem tree, but this one is a locust, locust oh, tree. Okay. And then it comes out with fruit we call kesen kesen because it's, look like, it's looking like a bush knife. And when it's dried out, it shakes and when we were kids, we used it to play with. Okay. But it's actually a locust tree. Musa and I went to a wonderful performance of dance. It wasn't a scheduled performance, and Musa had to go to a fair bit of trouble to get these dancers together to give us an idea of the kind of dance 
they do in the Gambia. dance for a couple of hours and it was absolutely infectious. The, the, the great acrobats, great drummers, great singers. There was one man, uh, I found out he, he's kind of a shaman. It's called a kankoran and I'd never seen anything like it. Earth fibers covered his entire body from head to toe. And then on top of that, he'd put fresh green foliage, like branches of green leaves. He looked kind of like a, a woolly brown bear. Towards the end of the performance, I thought, I, I gotta dance. It, it's very hard if you like to dance or you like action to just sit or stand still when you see something as exciting as this. On Sunday evening, Musa took me to the wrestling matches. Every Saturday and Sunday evening in Banjul, the capital of the Gambia, people go to the wrestling matches. Now, they had to drag me there because I'm not a wrestling fan, but it was one of the best evenings that I had in that country. The wrestling is like nothing I'd ever seen. It's men, young, full of energy, beautiful bodies, gorgeous guys who wear a loincloth, really. And you go into a big sand arena. I mean, everybody sits around in these, in these stands around a sand arena. It's not rough wrestling in that these men don't kick or punch, but they do grab handfuls of sand to get a grip on their partner. And then there's a little sand throwing and, you know, sand in the eyes. The idea is to get your opponent to the ground. And one will get his partner to the ground and then it's a big da-da as they stand up, run around, and hold out a hat for money. Successful wrestlers are believed to possess a superior gift of spiritual strength. Before matches, they will spend a lot of time putting on their amulets after keeping them warm over small bonfires. This is part of the Gambia's animist beliefs. Up near Georgetown, we crossed to the north side of the Gambia and visited the kind of village that I had always wanted to visit in Africa. One that was hardly, hardly influenced by tourists. No corrugated uh, tin roofs, no concrete or plaster, it was just homemade brick and wattle round houses with the thatched roofs. Oh, yes. What I was telling you about the yeah. is how they We saw the women stripping corn from the husks and uh, grinding the grain, making flour. Beautiful flour. flour. But while we were talking, a crowd was gathering, a crowd of villagers, uh, mostly women, old men and children. And we just started talking with each other and they'd show me their babies' pierced ears and their little brothers and sisters. Hello. Hello. Look, look, look. Look at the knees. And then they started to sing and dance. And these kids were so cute. Do they know that? 
Bye. 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 And thank you. Something I found very interesting about the Gambia was its role during the slave trade period. We went to James Island. James Island was pretty well occupied by, by a fortress that had been built in 1651. There was a little sign up to tell us this. But we saw this fort, which in time was used also as a slave prison. Uh, that was a pretty sobering sight. This is where they call the dungeon. For those ones who doesn't want to listen, the stubborn one. They're brought here and kept here for days and days. Dark in there, mm. isn't it? Small. Yeah, small. It's not a pleasant place. A couple of cannon, thick stone and brick walls, and parts of the dungeons in which up to 140 slaves were impounded are all that is left of the once impressive fort. See that? This is the last part of the dungeon. When a slave is totally stubborn, they bring you and they let you down here by ladder. So there's no way out unless you swim. And at high tides, the water comes in and it's wet in there, and at low tides, it dries out, but it's still wet. They stay here. Some of them died here. Or killed mm. themselves. Yeah, well, you can call it a suicide, but uh, just look at that. After slavery in the British colonies was abolished in 1807, Naval ships based at James Island intercepted more than a hundred French and Portuguese slave vessels off the Gambian coast. Probably the very best time I had in the Gambia was bird watching. I went out in the evening with a guide called Solomon. Uh, that's a pied kingfisher. Where? I can't tell. I can't see. On the right hand side, right on top. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's a pied kingfisher. What does pied mean? Pied is black and white and is the commonest kingfisher in the Gambia. He was just so gentle and so knowledgeable. We were sitting in this dugout canoe, very slowly moving along the mangroves just at sunset, it was a lovely time. And uh, he yeah, taught me a couple of Kingfisher, bird songs to help, to help me remember the call of the birds. That one goes, I am the red-eyed dove, I am the red-eyed dove. 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 I like that. Correct. That's it. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. That's the call of a scarlet spectacled wattle eye. Did you hear that? No. It's called the scarlet spectacled wattle eye. Yeah. It's, Something like that? Yeah. yeah. It goes Christmas Day is an uh, eating day. Christmas Day is 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 eating day. Overall, I was glad I went on this trip. I was glad to have had the opportunity to get to a part of the world I had never been to. But it was also good in that, um, in spite of the fact that it was maybe 4,000 miles away from the other part of Africa where I had lived, it was uh, so similar in many ways. And um, I guess I feel more complete after this trip. I just think there's so much 
wonderful stuff in the world beyond our small corner that we've got to get out there and see it. I guess I just love travel. You know, if I have a chance, I'll go for it.